It's Monday, OG, and you know what that means. Ready to kick off another week of Stacking Benjamin shows. But before we do that, on behalf of Navy Federal Credit Union and the team here at Stacking Benjamins, want to give a big shout out to the men and women in our armed forces serving the country for another weekend, OG, to keep us safe. I think they're all looking forward to the uh, Memorial Day weekend. I think they are. Everybody takes a break. The nation is undefended from Friday through Monday. Don't they set up the Chase Lounge on the aircraft carrier deck? Yeah, with the aviator sunglasses. Yeah, just imagine the beautiful sunsets out there. Mm. Sure, it's amazing. That and jet fuel. (laughs) (laughs) I love this smell of jet fuel in the morning. Like every Memorial Day. The fine people at Navy Federal Credit Union sent me this uh, 1,001 things to love about military life. I found a good one for today. Check this one out. Number 582, Green Care for Troops. And this is it project evergreen.com forward slash GCFT as in green care for troops project evergreen.com forward slash GCFT. Guess where that link takes you. I don't know. It's an outreach program helped to connect local professionals with military families in need of lawn care maintenance. Huh. You're out on deployment. Want to keep the lawn looking nice. There it is. So on behalf of the men and women of Stacking Benjamins and the Navy Federal Credit Union. Big shout out to our troops. Let's go stack some Benjamins together, OG. Greetings and salutations. Ooh, Papa do, and how do you do? I am the great P.T. Flea. <laughs> I'm in need of your assist. Oh, let's just cut to the chase. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamins Show. Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and are you ready for summer? Because we're kicking off the summer season in style by sharing the best deals and thrills from the theme parks around the country with Mr. Theme Park Insider himself, Robert Niles. Plus, how's your savings account looking? Are you adding to it? Here with stats from the Magnify Money April Savings Index, we welcome Ken Tooman. And later, we'll cast the Haven Lifeline to VJ, who's wondering whether he should switch from a W-2 employee to a sole proprietor in his side hustle. What's the framework he should use to evaluate this decision? And I'll send you for a loop in my theme park-themed trivia. And now, two guys who are too scared to ride anything but the teacups ride... It's Joe and oh, J-J-J-J-G. You know about that, the teacups, man, you get those things going, those can be scary as hell. Not scary, just puke-tastic. Right. Do not do the teacups after lunch. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Disney Rides for the Win podcast. I'm Joe Salci. Hi, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And here, kicking off a big week of shows with me, Mr. OG. So my kids last week of school, it's our last week before a few days off, although we really don't get any days off, I know. And my message to everyone, keep your shit together. <laughs> everyone knows it's coming. We get it. It's summer. Just keep your shit together for another week. So that's what I'm bringing today. Joe, I'm going to keep my shit together. But do you remember that the last week of school, you're looking out the window, there's leaves on the trees. You can barely stand to sit there all the way through fourth grade. Yeah. It's time to go. I made it further than fourth grade, but yeah, I understand. (laughs) It is though, like the official start of Stacking Benjamin summer, because for those of you new to the podcast, this has become a tradition of ours. Robert Niles kicks off summer. (laughs) It's like Puxatani Phil. Robert's our Puxatani Phil. I don't know if he'd like that or not. I, I don't think so. Maybe not, but we're going to find out if you are venturing back out there, all vaccinated up, ready to go and uh, looking forward to a uh, more normal summer, man, hopefully I, I hope and pray it's more of a normal summer. Robert's going to talk about how theme parks are going to try to lure you back this year. What's new, what's on sale. And even if it's not on sale, how to make sure you don't waste your money on a trip that ends up being miserable. You've seen that. Walking around uh, Disney World, OG, at about four in the afternoon. Doesn't look like the happiest place on earth. It doesn't. Nope. Not at <laughs> it looks four like o'clock. The, looks like the most miserable place. 
on earth. So let's not have that trip. Uh, but we got some great headlines in a TikTok minute that is uh, sure to make you some money, right? Small businesses are recovering from 2020s, you know, and looking for resources to rise to the challenge. And that's why Dell Technologies assembled an all-star lineup of podcasters to create a virtual conference to share advice and inspiration for your small business. Whether you're still working remotely or back together again, let Dell Technologies help safeguard your business with modern devices and Windows 10 Pro. Search Dell Technologies Small Business Pod for instance, radio.com, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. We're going to make you a millionaire during our TikTok minute, so let's get this party started. Hello, darlings. And now, it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins Headlines. Today's first headline comes to us from investmentnews.com. Hey, move over, Robin Hood. Bam, you're not the only one targeting the youngins anymore, OG. Turns out, according to writer Nicole Kasperson, that uh, Fidelity democratizes investing for teens. Teens will be able to trade U.S.-listed stocks, Fidelity mutual funds, and most exchange-traded funds with no account fees or commissions. I really think this is uh, long overdue. I, I'm I'm just trying to figure out how this is any different than any other child based account, other than like it puts the kid in charge. It's like I was talking to somebody and they go, "Did somebody just trademark the Utma?" Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but you never had the kid in charge. You always the Utma still has, still really has mom or dad in charge, yeah. even though it's the kid's money. Yeah. You and I both know that here's what happened before this. Kids would go out in the woods behind the school together. They'd huddle around the Robin hood app. I know where you're going. Secretly take out their cell phone yep. and, you know, do a few hits of tea or maybe a hog. Probably not many teenagers trading hog. I doubt it. GME, you know, getting their GME on. It's, it's, it's the new version of smoking in the boys room. Yeah, you know, snuck into mom and dad's bedroom and maybe maybe took a little took some stocks from dad's top dresser drawer and snuck out into the woods. Right, replaced it with random pieces of paper. Yeah, he'll never know, dude. Where did you get this? Oh, it was in my dad's drawer. I was so busy monitoring the bottles of liquor that I forgot that Junior was going to trade the stocks. Fidelity Investments launching a new type of account for teenagers to save and invest their money, according to an announcement last Tuesday. Meet Fidelity Youth Account, platform where teens will be able to trade U.S. listed stocks, Fidelity mutual funds, and most exchange traded funds. As I mentioned, no account fees or commissions. The platform also lets 13 to 17 year olds open savings accounts and debit cards with no account fees or minimums, according to the company's website. We get into a slippery slope with uh, debit cards? Uh, no, I, I think the debit cards are great. And basically, they're creating their own little cash checking savings, money market, trading account, whatever. All in one place. So that's good. And if I'd read on, Nicole actually answers all of my concerns next. The only requirements that the teens, and this is where they get you guys, this is where the teens parent or guardian must have an existing Fidelity account. Ooh. So, hey, we'll take the kids 20 bucks as long as we get mom's money. Mm -hmm. Parents can monitor their teens account activity online and through monthly statements, trade confirmations and by viewing debit card transactions and can also set up alerts to notify them of trades transactions and cash management activity. Can you see like the, you know, just like when I played little league, there were the parents that were into it too much. I told you, junior naked call options. What are you doing? What are you wasting my time going long on this stuff? You're putting your whole family to shame junior. If you don't get a day trading alert, <laughs> are you even doing it right? <laughs> Look at this eight trades today. That's my girl right there bragging to your friends at work. The announcement comes in the heels of a wave of young retail investors in the U S exploring trading for the first time. I do think this is great, man. If I had been more exposed to stocks and how, how stuff worked and my friends were into stocks when I was in my teens or early twenties, think about how much further ahead you might be. Oh, I know not necessarily trading stocks, but just owning them, just getting interested. Yeah. 
I had no idea how any of this stuff worked. I remember in one econ class, we could, you know, buy a few fake shares of, of a stock. And of course, then you took out the newspaper and your abacus. Slide rule. It, it works, works a little different today. Hey, it's time for our TikTok video minute. Uh, this is the segment of the show where we highlight one fantastic piece of advice from a TikTok creator. And uh, today is definitely not going to disappoint because, OG, you could be a millionaire and you don't even know it. You've, you've got millionaire all over you. You've got an extra million dollars laying around and you're totally just rinsing it down the sink. You want to do better? Do you want the Do you want the free million? Uh, yeah, I would split it with you. Oh, well, that is very nice of you on a Monday too. That's that's very nice. Keeping my <gasps> together. What 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 happened to you over the weekend? Who are you? <laughs> I think that's losing it right there. Uh, this is TikTok uh, teen executive gives us this advice. Just how to make a million dollars or more with very little effort. Whenever you go to a hotel, get a bunch of free soap instead of buying it from a store. This will save you on average $45 a It's amazing. Until you think through those facts. Number one, I'm going to make a million by stealing the soap from a hotel. I'd like that to be the title of my next book. How I Made a Million Stealing Soap. How Holiday Inn Made Me a Millionaire. Yeah. How I Spent 200 a Night at a Holiday Inn Express. To, to steal. So my question was, I think you got to say the word parlayed, how I parlayed $200 a night stays to, in the billions to uh, free soap for life. I do have a question about this in general. Maybe we've talked about it or answered it in the past or someone who's in the industry would know, but you know, you have the little soap bar that's wrapped up in the little plastic thing. When you get there, I've never used an entire bar of soap at a hotel stay. Have you? No. So, what happens to it? I will tell you, I was listening to, oh, I don't remember what podcast it was. It might've been 99% visible, but I don't think it was. It was uh, or like the leftover soaps and shampoos. And there is a company that takes the leftover stuff and he reheats it and sanitizes it and puts it back, back out there. Got it. So you're using somebody else's used soap. Got it. Okay. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure that that's what I thought was the case. And it's not even just one other person. You're basically using the entire universes of Mary. Well, and I don't know that this is everywhere. And if somebody could point me back to this uh, episode that might've heard it too, we'll share it with everybody later on. But this, uh, until my understanding is most of it just gets, was getting thrown away. And uh, there's now some of these companies going, Hey, there's an opportunity here to, uh, sanitize. And isn't, isn't soap already sanitary? How does one sanitize the, something that is in and of itself, the very thing that makes one sanitary? If I find, I was going to say something cause I thought it was funny. And then I realized this is way too gross to even joke about it. Yeah. But if I'm using some soap, don't do it. I, don't do I it. won't, but, but you know where I'm going. Yeah. I'm no. still stuck on the re-sanitizing. It's like you need to use antibacterial okay, a, soap. Isn't soap antibacterial by its I, nature? I'm not worried about that. I'm <laughs> making the antibacterial stuff more antibacterial. Exactly. Take oh, the bacteria out of the stuff that doesn't have bacteria. This is a wet lake. This, this river's really wet. See, we have to re-wet this lake. Turns out it's, anyway. it's not wet enough. I, I'm not even stuck on that. Oh, I'm stuck on... Who the hell spends forty five dollars a month on cleaning on on soap? Do you? When's the last time you spent? This is. I mean, don't get me wrong. The video, and I'll post a link on our show notes page at Stacky Benjamins, or if you get the guide, you've already seen it. Uh, StackyBenjamins dot com forward slash stacker to get the the show guide. But this kid looks pretty clean. But forty five dollars a month on soap. He's a teenager, so he showers more than most. This was something that uh, a mentor of mine, and, and I know you know, trying to get big lessons out of the TikTok video could probably be a waste of time. But um, there was a mentor who once said, beware charts and graphs. And don't just look at the end game, which is, hey, if you take $45 a month, you're a millionaire. Okay. I haven't done the math, but that's in the realm of possibility. But the key is $45 worth of hotel soap is where the rubber might meet the road. Also, it would take 53 years for that to be 
$45 a month to make a, make you a millionaire, but whatever. Well, and he looks like he's 15. So there you go. There you uh, go. Thanks to Johnny Doubled Up on uh, Twitter for sending that our way. And in our second headline, Magnify Money is out with their April savings index. To dig into that with us, we have a gentleman here with us who not only is a savings analyst for Magnify Money, but also is Deposit Accounts founder, Ken Tuman. Ken, how are you, man? Hi, Joe. It's great to be with you. I'm so happy you could go through this with us. Let's walk through the savings index. Exactly what does the savings index monitor that Magnify Money has? Well, each month we do a survey and it takes into account or asks people how much they've added to their savings. And um, it kind of tracks how the people are uh, treating their savings. Are they adding to it or, or are they not? And also it, it asks, so what are you saving for? And also, are you taking away? Are you withdrawing from your savings? So it gives kind of a overall picture of how Americans are, are handling our savings. We're going to go through the April numbers here in just a second, Ken. But before we dig into that, uh, you guys were doing this all the way through the pandemic. How did savings look throughout the last year? One interesting thing, after every, each of the stimulus payments, the month that follows, we saw a spike or an increase in what people were adding to their savings, which is a good sign that people, um, those at least that were able to keep their jobs, many of them, instead of using it to spend, they used it to add to their savings. Which is fantastic because so, that's actually, you know, we're a little cynical here in mom's basement, Ken, and thought that there were a bunch of people spending it on big screen TVs and <laughs> and, and uh, having a little fun, maybe getting the new PlayStation or whatever. Yeah, but it turns out uh, people were actually adding to their savings. What about the other months, though? Because we've heard about this K-shaped recovery where some people doing very well, some people not doing so well. Did you Were you able to see any of that in the survey throughout the pandemic? Well, one thing we also looked at, too, is by the income levels. And we did find that those had the highest income levels did actually do more savings versus those in the lower income bracket where maybe the more of the essentials were um, needed and you uh, saved less and spent more. Yeah. Well, let's dive into April then. What did you guys find out this month, Ken? Well, it was actually a record of our 19 month history of doing this survey. We found that most people, almost half, were actually adding to their savings. So that is the highest percentage that you've had in the almost two years that you've done it. What do you yep. think that that says? Try to interpret that for me. What do you think that means? Well, I think definitely the, uh, I think the stimulus payments, the latest round had a lot to do with that. Why it was actually higher than the previous months during the pandemic, I think it's a little hard to say. We would think that uh, we're starting to come out of the pandemic and we'd see some higher levels of spending and, and a little less savings, but that wasn't the case. That is kind of an interesting uh, development. It might suggest maybe people are starting to make savings more important and maybe it will be more of a long-term change um, rather than a, a short-term change from the pandemic. Man, what a rainbow that would be, huh? That would be yeah. fan, fantastic for all of us money nerds like you and I. Uh, consumers, you saw, though, also seem, and we've reported this on the show before, ready for a vacation. Yep, that was the number one besides, you know, the general savings and emergency fund saving, um, saving for vacation was the highest purpose goal that people were using their savings for. Nothing against uh, saving for that, Ken, but we've been reporting a lot lately that, man, you got to start booking that stuff now because it sure feels like everybody, well, everybody wants a rental car. The cruise ships are back in the port. The uh, airlines are all gearing back up again. And um, I have this feeling it's going to make everything more expensive. I just thought. Yeah. When they finally start seeing that surge, that's probably going to be more expensive. You've got almost two years of doing this under your belt. Any idea, any thoughts about where where we might be headed this summer? I mean, I don't, uh, but I'm not looking at you as Ken, the prognosticator, <laughs> but you've been doing this not just for the last 19 months, but of course with deposit accounts for a long time. How do you think this looks during the summer? Does it go down just because of normal summer activity coming back? Yeah, I think we will see more spending and, and that'll decrease some savings going forward. I mean, it's, it's this matter of time when you get the, um, a lot of these uh, restrictions out of the way and people start, uh, 
participating more in the economy. And I think you will see more spending and definitely vacations will be one of them, but just going out and out to eat and doing a lot of those service activities, which was so important to the U.S. economy. So I think we will see as the pandemic goes away, we'll see the spending increase dramatically. Question is how that's going to affect inflation. That might, uh, you might see this year is going to be interesting in that regard. We already saw a uh, pretty big rise in inflation that might continue. Last question for you, sir, is on uh, interest rates. Obviously, d- deposit accounts, it Magnify Money, Magnify Money being a sponsor of ours, by the way, where I got in my Ally account through Magnify Money comparing savings rates. Where have you seen uh, rates go? Have rates started to finally bump up? Well, you know, that's kind of the, uh, the good thing about increasing savings rate is that uh, more people are saving. The bad news is that a lot of that savings goes into deposits at banks. So banks now have flushed with deposits. And also, um, you know, debt is going down a little bit, people paying off their debt, which is a good thing. But on the other hand, that means banks are having uh, smaller loan balances. So uh, more deposits, fewer loans means banks are, are having to cut their rates. So we are seeing record low deposit rates, even at online banks that are, like Ally, we're seeing record low deposit rates that were actually lower this year than they were even during the seven years of the last zero rate environment after the Great Recession. And I think it's been driven by these record deposit levels that we've seen that's just driving the rates down. Same with CDs? Yep, CDs are still at record low levels. Um, Even at online banks, we're seeing um, rates lower than we ever have seen before. And we've been tracking this for more than 10 years. That's crazy. There is a, yeah. I, I mean, I remember the, the, just an old guy story on my end, like talking about five and 6% rates back in the late nineties, yeah. you know, and thinking of that for a long time is just normal is five or 6% yeah. and nowhere near that. You're lucky if you're scoring, you know, one. Something. Yeah. 1% is hard to get these days. Ken, I bet, you know, a site or two where people might be able to get more information about this study and about savings in general. Yep, magnifymoney.com. And if you want to also look at deposit rates, depositaccounts.com. Awesome. And we'll link to both of those in our show notes as usual at stackybedjamins.com. Ken, thanks for spending a few minutes with us and talking uh, savings rates in the U.S. That's great news this month. Thanks. Big thanks to Ken Tuman for hanging out with us for a few minutes. That's great news, OG. More savers. I like it. We joke so much about people not saving their stimulus checks. But apparently they did. Yeah. Turns out people are doing the right thing. All right, man. Your one biggest takeaway. What you got? I actually like this Fidelity account. I was um, just talking to my uh, oldest about this because, you know, he's got money in a bank and he's got money in his stockpile account that we started uh, with him. And now he's got a TD Ameritrade account that he has. And I, and I like the idea of putting it all together, especially as he's getting a little bit older and the responsibility that he's starting to have around paying for things on his own and budgeting on his own and that sort of thing. So uh, Fidelity putting this all together, I'm a fan. I will second that emotion and add that I just like starting early, you know, and frankly, if you're in your fifties listening to this and you've not invested the, the best time to get started is now OG, but man, if you've got uh, kids at home or if you're a teenager listening to us, getting out there and just putting a few dollars away and uh, putting them in investments that can beat the heck out of inflation because that's the way you win is a powerful thing. Hey, trivia fans, the basement's ready for Robert Niles to stop by and not a moment too soon because as you know, last year I couldn't host my famous neighborhood carnival because it's stupid COVID-19. This year is a whole new enchilada because to make up for lost time, I'm going bigger and better than ever. If Robert's taught me anything when he talks about all of these rides, it's that your operation needs a strong identity, something for people to remember. It should be a big name, a name that promises hope and excitement for the huddled masses that we're trying to help out. So stackers, I'm pleased to announce the official name of our backyard carnival extravaganza welcome one welcome all to the thanks tracy 
the World Texarkana Fair. I know what you're thinking, and I know it's genius, so let's just bypass all that because there's a wicked ending to this little tale I'll tell you in a few minutes. But before I share the lunacy of what happened when I went to register the greatest name on earth so nobody steals it from us, let's get you today's trivia. Speaking of parks, with a strong identity, what ride will you find at every Disney park? I'll be back with your answer faster than you can put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Small businesses are recovering from 2020, as you know, and looking for resources to rise to the challenge. And that's why Dell Technologies assembled an all-star lineup of podcasters to create a virtual conference to share advice and inspiration for your small business. Whether you're still working remotely or back together again, let Dell Technologies help safeguard your business with modern devices and Windows 10 Pro. Search Dell Technologies Small Business Pod for instance, radio.com, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. Well, you know, when you're done clowning around with us, a couple guys who are a good one two punch after us is my friends don and tom over at talking real money podcast you can listen to it wherever you're listening to us now or at talkingrealmoney.com or we'll even have a link in our show notes but on their show you're going to get straightforward honest advice on building the wealth you need for a more secure future these two guys are industry veterans in two ways they've been talking about money for a long time Tom is the former host of Serious Money on PBS, and Don's one of the first national financial talk show hosts, starting with Business Radio Network back in 1988. So these guys know how to make sure that uh, you understand money. Investing is way too simple to be as complicated as Wall Street wants you to believe. They have a ton of fun. They have over 600 episodes for you to binge on. There's no one size fits all. You can kind of find the perfect one for your listening pleasure just put it on play and let these guys go don of course has this voice that if i had his voice i'd burn mine so check them out after you're finished with us don and tom over at talking real money podcast wherever finer podcasts are found when it comes to audio production we have a lot of fun but i have a skill set that i at least know where to start from The bad news is, is when it comes to design outside of audio, visual design, I have no idea. I know what I like, but I don't know how to create it. And I'm a sucker for great packaging, by the way. I I buy my board games partially based on how nice the things look. But I got to tell you, now that we've got Canva Pro here in the basement, kids, our designs our next level, whenever we're working on a stacker event, our newsletter, whatever it is, Canva Pro is this easy to use design platform that has everything you need to design like a pro. So whether you're a professional designer or you're just getting started, Canva Pro can help boost you and your team's productivity and creativity. It's quick, easy, and affordable. So it's a great way to design no matter what you need. No matter what you're creating or sharing, Canva Pro has got everything in one place, including this collection of Over 75 million premium photos. I can't imagine needing more than 75 photos. But of course, everybody's got different things we're designing. So 75 million plus videos, audio, graphics. It comes with these time-saving tools that simplify and speed up your creative process. You get all that more in just one Canva Pro subscription. I like the fact that there's a bunch of templates to work from. I'm the guy that if I see it dressed on the mannequin, that's where I start. Same thing with Canva Pro, some fantastic templates that I can start with and make our stuff shine. There's no idea too big or small for Canva Pro. So whether you are just trying to dress up your philanthropies minutes or your newsletter, you're in charge of graphics for a local group you belong to, you have a small business or you're part of a big business that just needs better design help Canva Pro is the place to go. Design like a pro with Canva Pro right now, stackers. You get a free 45-day extended trial when you use the stacker promo code. You ready? Go to canva.me, M-E slash S-B, and you'll get a free 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash S-B, canva.me slash S-B. Hey, stackers, it's me, 
your pal, neighbor Doug. So get this, I'm down registering the name and I'm talking to a nice woman, well, I thought she was nice, named Peggy, trying to register my fare as an official business. Well, like any smart business person, I need a name to roll off your tongue like, uh, you know, like onomatopoeia or uh, lasagna. And, and even I can recognize that World Texarkana Fair. Tracy, you're getting on my nerves. That's a mouthful. And the best businesses have shortened versions of their name. Uh, you, know, you know, like uh, how American Broadcasting Corporation shortened it to ABC or, you know, ESPN. Well, nobody knows what that stands for, but, you know. ESPN and NBC, you get it. So I decided to take a page out of their book. And Peggy asks me, what's the name of the business? And I say, WTF. Get this, Peggy starts getting short with me. Uh, Sir, I just need to know the name of the business. Okay, Peggy, WTF. Sir, you came here to register your business, so I'm not sure why you're being so belligerent. Belligerent? WTF, lady. WTF, can you get that through your thick skull? I don't have time to deal with these shenanigans. Plus, I had to finish up my trivia for all you lovely folks. So, you know, I just left. Which reminds me, what is the ride you'll find at every Disney park? If you guessed Dumbo the Flying Elephant, you'd be right. Maybe it's time I just move on to my own signature attraction, Bobbing for Donuts, or BFD for short since Peggy was no help. See ya! Well, if you have been around this show for any length of time, you know that our next guest is the creator of the biggest website about theme parks and summer entertainment. He's the number one source we always go to when we're wondering what's hot, what might be in trouble, where are the best places to spend money if we're headed to theme parks, and who's offering discounts. Sometimes though, OG, he also points out that it's not about the discounts. It's about, as is so often the case, just making sure that the value, even if you're paying full price, is worth it. And sometimes you get a great discount on something, you end up wasting time. And we've had, I'm thinking of Harvard researcher, Ashley Winnens, who was here recently talking about how we often value discounts, but we don't think about the value of our time. And we do have a limited supply of time. So we want to be careful with that too. So in that vein, time for us to say hello to summer, which means let's say hello to Robert Niles. And the sure sign that summer's on its way. I'm so happy he's here. Mr. Theme Park Insider himself, Robert Niles, is back. How are you, my friend? I am here. I am ready to have a great time this summer. I am curious. You are the ultimate Theme Park Insider, the guy I know that knows more about theme parks than anybody, my friend. You can go back to one park this summer, right? You know everything about all the different parks. You've got one choice. Where are you headed? I would go to a place that I can't currently go to. Honestly, my first choice would be I would love to get over to Universal Studios Japan and see that new Super Nintendo world. Wow. Uh, but they remain closed due to the pandemic. The borders are closed anyway. But as soon as all that opens up again, I'm going to be pricing tickets to Osaka because uh, that is the thing I have most wanted to see for several years now. My daughter uh, lives not far from there right now. She teaches English uh, as a second language in Japan. So, yeah. Yeah. It's for stuff in the U.S. that I actually can go visit right now. I am so looking forward to getting on the new Jurassic World Velocicoaster at Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure. So hyped for that new ride. People are saying this might be the best new coaster in the world. Tell me about it. Why is it so cool? It is just kind of the elements that they've put together and the order they've done it. Everyone's just saying it's an absolutely exhilarating ride. And they've put some little pluses on it, too. It's all themed to... Uh, you know, the fine folks at Jurassic World who, you know, run the safest theme park in the universe, uh, as we all know, decided <laughs> right. it would be a great idea to put a roller coaster in the raptor paddock. I mean, what could go wrong What there? could possibly happen? 
And of course, everything does go terribly wrong. And it's wonderful and exciting and thrilling. And everyone who has been on that, it's in what they call technical rehearsals right now, which is a soft opening. But the fans who have been on have just been raving about it. It officially opens on June 10th. And uh, I'm looking forward to get out there for a little media preview before then. That's fantastic. I know that uh, for a large segment of our audience that loves theme parks, and you know this better than I do, uh, wearing a mask all day in the heat didn't sound like much fun. So when theme parks open, people largely stayed away. Also, you have, on the other hand, I've had three family members that died from COVID. I don't want to get mm -hmm. sick. So wearing the mask seems like a good idea. So I want to wear the mask. I don't want to wear the mask. For better or worse, Robert, what's the state of masks and theme parks going to be like at least early this summer? Yeah, it is changing constantly. Six Flags today, just uh, six of their parks just put out guidance saying that they are going with the CDC. So if you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask. If you are not vaccinated, they are recommending that you wear a mask. Uh, you know, we can get into the whole sociology on whether people will do that or not. Basically, I think the common sense here that everyone seems to be saying is if you're vaccinated, Good. Good for you. Get vaccinated. Uh, if you're not vaccinated yet and you're 12 or over, go get it as soon as you can. It's widely available now. But bring a mask with you. A lot of parks, even if they're not requiring it outdoors, are requiring it when you're inside. That's oh. the case for Universal and Disney in Florida. Uh, the California parks, you still have to have them on it all the time unless you're actively eating. Uh, but have it with you just, uh, you know, just in case you run into something. Whatever you believe, whatever your status is, if a park asks you to do something, respect that. You know, if they ask you, don't get on this ride, you know, wear the mask, stay in this place, stay separated from people, always follow the park rules. That is the safe and it's the courteous thing to do. What uh, deals are you seeing parks offer this year to entice people to come back? It is interesting. There's a lot of experimentation going on right now. Uh, a lot of uh, kind of variable pricing happening at this stage. You're not seeing the same type of just across the board deals like, you know, bring in a Coke can or something and get yeah. whatever off. It really helps to be following social media, looking at discounters. But in general, I think there are deals available out there. You just have to kind of go looking for them. Uh, obviously, we've got a page with uh, uh, ticket discounts on our site at themeparkinsider.com you can go to. Uh, there are a lot of things available there. But uh, we're not quite seeing the free-for-all in discounting that we've seen in years past because capacity is still controlled at a lot of parks. But there are some deals available if you go look. But still better – you guys on your site and elsewhere, are you seeing better deals at regional theme parks or at the big boys? Honestly, at this point, I'm seeing the big boys. Uh, Universal has some pretty nice deals that are still available. We've got discounts on multi-day tickets at Disneyland, which is you know pretty much unheard of in the market at this point. <laughs> So, you know, there are some deals available there at the big boys. I think that might be just because the regionals just aren't as aggressive as they've been. But it's also really early in the season. And it's really early in a very unpredictable season. So capacities are still down a little bit. People are seeing if the guests are going to be coming back. I'm anticipating that we will be seeing more aggressive discounting from the regional parks later in the summer as they get a handle on what the situation is and they decide to get a little bit more aggressive. But for right now, uh, you know, the regionals, they're doing a little bit, but it's not the type of aggressive discounting we've seen in the past from them. Boy, so if you're bored in August, maybe go look again, head to Theme Park Insider someplace in, in August and maybe score a end, of, uh, end of summer deal. Yeah, I, th I, I think there may be a lot of uh, opportunities late in the summer this year, particularly as capacity increases, especially in California. You know, they're supposed to be lifting a lot of rules on June 15th, so we'll see what the lay of the land is there. But if you've got all of that inventory all of a sudden coming open in California, that is going to have a ripple effect throughout the industry coast to coast. And I think that a lot of the regional parks, particularly in the Midwest, might decide, you know, we need to compete if Florida and California are ramping up and trying to take a lot of our local visitors away. And I believe it. And everybody's itching for a trip, too. So that Absolutely. may move people around. I, I want to follow up on the second uh, piece of what you said there, which is variable pricing and, and doing just a little bit of reading on this. Is this like surge pricing with Uber? Is this something that's just going to be a fact of life forever, that it's going to be more on X day and less on a different day? Yeah, I think that's become the new normal in theme parks at this point. Everybody is worried about load management in this industry right now. Nobody wants to be in the situation where you're turning people away at the gate. 
But also nobody wants to be in a situation where they're leaving money on the table. So everyone has decided that if you've got a variable number of people who are wanting to show up every day and you have a constant amount of capacity that you can offer, you need to vary the price in order to smooth out you know, all those rough edges in the marketplace. So it was just really a matter of getting the technology in place to support that. You know, Back when you were selling paper tickets, you couldn't really do variable pricing schemes. But now that everything is online and run by computers anyway, hey, it's not that difficult to throw in variable pricing into the mix. And you know, now that we've seen uh, Disney and Universal adopt that, I, I think you know, that's just going to be the way things are in this industry going forward. It sounds like in the future, I'll still be able to score maybe a cheaper ticket, but there were times, and you and I have talked about this, that we all, we all uh, value a deal, but really you're about making sure it's worth the money, regardless of what you pay. I know we've talked about that yeah, before, yeah. but my experience now, I may be in a crowded park, Robert, is what you're saying is there's no more go the first two weeks of December because nobody's there because Disney now will be able to price the tickets so cheap that that park's going to be full no matter what day it is. Well, I mean, there's full and then there's packed. Let's put uh, yeah. it that way. I, I don't think there's ever going to be a situation where you're going to see a park wall to wall during the school year the same way that you see it, say, on Fourth of July weekend. There'll still be some variance in crowd levels. But yeah, I mean, it's theme parks hate it when there's a day that you can go in and walk on everything. That means they just haven't gotten enough people through that that front gate. Uh, yeah, with Disney, they've got enough demand that they can get those parks pretty close to full year round. But if you're talking about regional parks where you just don't have that kind of demand on the shoulder seasons, yeah, there's still going to be days that they could discount it as much as they want it. But there's, it's, everything's going to be a walk on because kids are you know, still in school at that point, And maybe they just don't have that kind of demand. So maybe if you're looking for that, uh, you know, 25 rides in one day experience, you're not looking to go to Disney World. You're maybe looking at, uh, you know, a local regional Six Flags Cedar Fair or Busch Gardens Park. Lots of great parks there, too. I mean, having been to several Absolutely. of those, great entertainment. Let's do a little rapid fire on what's new around the United States, starting with the big boys you mentioned at Universal, uh, the Jurassic Park ride. New at Disney. Uh, new at Disney, look out in California. If you are a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan, we've got Avengers Campus opening up for you uh, June 4th, Disney California Adventure. They're going to have a new interactive Spider-Man ride where you can actually shoot webs out of your own wrist at Spider-Bots <laughs> uh, with you know Disney magical effects. So that's going to be a big thing. Later this year, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is coming to an expanded France pavilion at Walt Disney World's Epcot. So if you're into that uh, wonderful Pixar movie, you're going to have a chance to shrink down to that size and go running through the kitchens of Paris. I read a review of that ride on your site, on, on, the, mm -hmm. on the one from Paris. Sounded like, yes. a, like a nice family ride, more the same at Epcot? Yeah, the, you're basically looking – it's a clone of the ride that they installed at the Second Gate Walt Disney Studios Park at the Disneyland Paris Resort several years ago. Wildly popular. It's been the, the top ride in that park for many years, so they decided they wanted to bring it stateside. And a uh, perfect place to put that in an expanded France pavilion at Epcot. Let's go around the nation. The sexiest stuff at the regional parks? Right now, I think a lot of fans are just waiting to see uh, when the SeaWorld chain announces the opening dates for all those new coasters that were going to debut last year that got delayed because of the pandemic. Big new hybrid coaster, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa, Pantheon, another great coaster coming in, Busch Gardens Williamsburg. What's a, what's uh, a hybrid coaster mean? Hybrid coaster is basically you took a wooden roller coaster – the Gwazi roller coaster they had that was just getting battered by the Florida sun. You come in there and you put a fresh new iron, uh, you know, steel track uh, on top of the thing, and you reprofile and you you make it this crazy new experience. This is like uh, called, this is like Steel yeah, Vengeance at uh, Cedar yeah. Point, yeah. Same company, Rocky Mountain Construction, uh, has been doing this at uh, parks around the country. They first started, I believe, Six Flags over Texas. But they did that uh, for Steel Vengeance up at Cedar Point, which has gotten great reviews, one of the top three or four coasters in the country to this day. So they're building a big one uh, at uh, Tampa. And we'll see when it opens. I mean, it's been running testing before. Everyone's just saying, give me an opening date. I went two years ago and rode the one at uh, Cedar Point based on your recommendation. 
And uh, I about lost my mind. It was, it was, I didn't know if I was going to pass out or throw up, actually not throw up. Cause it was really smooth for as fast as it yeah. went. And as many times I went, I, I lost track of many times I went upside down, but I went upside down a lot and just an amazing ride. Just an amazing I, ride. We, we, we joke that we, we don't know why they spent money on seats. Cause there's so much air time. You're right. basically standing up the entire ride. You totally are. <laughs> uh, but I interrupted you, sir. You were talking about one of my favorite parks, uh, Bush gardens, Williamsburg. Oh yeah. They're putting in Pantheon, which is a, a new coaster, I believe from Inamon. And this one, it's going to be, uh, one of their, their launch coasters with some really nice track effects. In fact, uh, it's going to be a lot of the same track effects that they put into that Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Orlando a couple years back. I mean, you won't have all that Harry Potter story or anything, but if you're just looking for, you know, the straight up thrill ride experience, Bush Gardens Williamsburg is going to have that for you sometime whenever they get around to opening that. And the rest of that park is just gorgeous too. It's so some nice. Wonderful family attractions there. That's that's really one of my favorite parks in America to visit. And Williamsburg has got so many attractions. Still. Absolutely. And I've talked to so many people, though, Robert, that love Williamsburg and love the history and they ignore that park. And I think if you ah. like parks at all, spend an extra day there because even the food for a regional theme park is pretty damn good there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a Bush Gardens park. Uh, they used to be owned by Anheuser-Busch back in the day. So they were all about the food and beverage. And that tradition has continued now under their current ownership. What about the Northeast and Midwest? Uh, well, it's not quite as aggressive a, a year as you saw before the pandemic. Uh, a lot of stuff that was put up for last year is coming up. There's this big uh, Jersey Devil coaster coming to uh, Six Flags Great Adventure. That's another one of those RMC coasters, but it's custom built. So it's like a single rail coaster, which is bizarre if you've ever experienced one of those, because for some reason... You're just as secure on top of that one basic monorail type coaster as you are on a two rail coaster. But your mind just doesn't believe that. <laughs> your mind thinks that you're just going to go spinning off one side. So you're just bracing yourself and you're seated in single file, too. So there's nobody next to you to grab on. Uh, so, you know, it just plays with your head a little bit and is just so much more of a thrilling ride. So Which Jersey is- Devil Coaster, that's going to be coming you know, within the next several weeks, probably. Oh, and that's at, in New uh, Jersey. Six Flags Great Adventure gotcha. in New Jersey. Yeah. And, you know, it's just Jersey Devil is just a great name and theme for that coaster, too. So uh, they just uh, dropped a uh, Harley Quinn Spin Sanity, which is one of those swinging pendulum rides at Six Flags America just outside of D.C., too. Uh, Those are just fun rides, too. Just a really great way to get way up in the air and spinning around and, uh, you know, don't have lunch just before you go on it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a great deal of fun. On your site, did you mention something new coming to Dollywood? Uh, Dollywood this year, they just uh, did a retrack on that partial retrack on the uh, lightning rod coaster, which is the, their top coaster there that people absolutely love. They're leaning into a lot of festivals this year. Uh, they're doing a uh, food festival right now, uh, no, a flower festival right now. And uh, so there's a lot of special programming coming to the park this year. But uh, yeah, really, it's just been kind of the retrack of that. And they also did a retrack on their Mystery Mine roller coaster, too. So it's really kind of like new experiences there for coaster fans. I've been through that area quite a bit. I've never stopped at Dollywood. Is it worth? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, not only is it just because of the, the rides are great. I mean, they're wonderful. They've got great food there. Uh, Hershend is known for wonderful customer service. But this is Dolly Parton's Park. There is great musical live <laughs> entertainment in there. They are always bringing in bands from around the country touring bands and they've got some great house shows going on there too you go to the chicken restaurant and the lady who runs the chicken restaurant is just uh, hilarious so there are so many great entertainment opportunities at dollywood don't talk about chicken we're recording this around lunchtime my time <laughs> not, not good uh heading a little bit west uh, as far as you want to go because you're the master here but i know let's go all the way west to start off with another one of my favorite kind of quirky parks knott's berry farm uh doing a big celebration this year They are celebrating their 100th anniversary of the farm, not the park itself, the actual farm. Knott's Berry Farm isn't just a name. That was literally what was there. They grew boysenberries, which is their big signature uh, fruit. It was a farm, and then they started selling chicken dinners during the Depression, and people queued up for the chicken dinners. So they built a little ghost town to entertain people, and yada, yada, yada. One thing led to another. It's a huge amusement park these days. But, uh, you know, 100 years ago last year, this was postponed because of the pandemic is when they opened the original Knott's Berry Farm. So they're celebrating that this year. And they've got a fun, fun new ride 
called Knott's Berry, like the animal, Tales, Return to the Fair, which is a uh, interactive dark ride. It's a shooter-up ride that is a callback to an old-school dark ride they had back in the 70s and 80s called Knott's Berry Tale. And it is hilarious. It's a lot of fun. Basically, you are, you've got a little jelly shooter. You're trying to uh, shoot at these coyotes that have been stealing the boysenberry pies that the bear family has been making to take to the fair. And it is filled with so many puns. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> the, the two main characters are Boysen Bear and Girlson Bear. Boysen's wife, who cooks all of the pies, is Mary Berry. Of course. This is like dad joke heaven, Robert. It is absolute dad joke heaven, and I love it. (laughs) I always forget to ask you about the Pacific Northwest. There's so much to see there, but I got to believe in theme park world, there's some cool stuff up there as well. There is a park up in Idaho, Silverwood. They are debuting their own new Rocky Mountain construction uh, roller coaster. That's uh, where RMC is located up in Idaho, Stunt Pilot. And that is actually opening end of May. So that's going to be a fun new coaster up there for a part of the country that you're right, doesn't get enough love from the roller coaster industry sometimes, but they're going to be getting what looks like a really nice one up there at uh, Silverwood. You've got a huge community of people that I know give each other advice. You guys have all kinds of resources at Theme Park Insider. We also have a group, though, and there was somebody asking about Disney in particular on our group page last week. But, Mm -hmm. But just a couple basic questions, not just for Disney, but for all these places. Stay on site or do I stay at the cheap hotel down the street? Really you want to look at what the benefits are for staying on site because it depends. Uh, the one I always like to cite is Universal Orlando. If you stay at one of their top three hotels there, you get a free front of line pass for up to five people in your room the entire time that you're there. That is a huge fa- – in fact, actually – Sometimes that can cost as much as the room itself if you were just to buy that separately. So you're basically getting like a four-star hotel room for free by staying there and getting you know, the front of line access. So that's a wonderful, wonderful deal. You have certain Disney hotels. You are just you're right there within you know easy walking distance. You might have special access into parks like the Grand Californian at Disneyland. There's the, they have their own little entrance into California Adventure which can really kind of give you a head start on things. So you want to look at what the particular deals that are being offered for people who are staying on site. But there are also a lot of situations where being off site can be great. Like, you know, at Disneyland, if you want to stay at one of those Harbor Boulevard hotels, you do just walk across the street and you're right there. You don't have any special benefits, but a lot of those have been cut back at a lot of resorts. So it really just comes down to the individual situation. I don't think that's something where you can say one or the other is always the way that you want to go. Uh, food is something that if people are new to theme parks, they would never think that food is a thing. And yet, especially especially at the big national parks, food is a big, big thing. Any restaurants, if you go to any of these parks in particular, that you absolutely love? Certainly. I mean, the park, our readers just keep recommending again and again. If you go to Universal Orlando's Mythos at Islands of Adventure, which you is recommended a great- that you recommended that to me and Cheryl and I went there after you recommended it. And holy cow, was this good? It's a sit down restaurant, but the value is amazing. You can find better gourmet meals places, but you're going to pay a hundred bucks for it. You go here and you can get some just great food there for a fraction of that price. And, you know, just right next door at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, they've got the three broomsticks there. And that's another great restaurant that's more of a kind of a counter service place rather than sit down waiters come to you. But great food there as well. Disney, if you go around Epcot's World Showcase, there are so many places you can go in there. You can't go wrong. But I love it when parks do things with theme on food. And at that Avengers campus that's opening up at California Adventure, haven't been in there yet. They haven't started serving, but they're doing a PIM test kitchen named after PIM particles from the MCU. <laughs> and the whole conceit there is that everything is kind of odd shapes and sizes. So they're playing around kind of with the visuals of it. But they're doing a lot of little creative things there, and they've got fun stuff on the menu. And right next door, they've got a little shawarma cart, you know, which is a callback to the end of the first <laughs> Avengers movie. So there's a lot of fun stuff happening at parks that are you know, on theme with the various uh, you know, IPM franchises that are out there. They're just you know, a lot more fun than going to like your, your local McDonald's or Chick-fil-A. I wish you knew something about this stuff. 
If, <laughs> o- if only you studied it a little or seemed at all excited about it. It doesn't feel like studying it at all. It's just fun. <laughs> We're going to link to themeparkinsider.com on our show notes page. Seriously, uh, all kinds of pieces that... Well, in fact, there's a great piece I want to talk to you about. We're out of time, but where do fans want to spend extra money at theme parks? And you actually surveyed the Mm -hmm. thousands of people that are there and uh, people want to spend more money on food, which kind of is why I asked that question. And then merchandise second. And then uh, uh, all the new things are there. All of you talked about deals are there. But also, Robert, I wanted to ask you briefly, because I don't think we've done this before in all the years that you've been here. This, I believe, started off as a side hustle theme park insider for you and talk me through the beginning of theme park insider because we got so many people out there that are maybe thinking about starting a website or thinking about starting a new brand tell me about those early days and maybe when you decided it was time to go full-time yeah i actually we celebrated our 20th anniversary last That's summer crazy There's- uh, if you go to our homepage, there's uh, a link down there to 20 great reads from 20 years of Theme Park Insider, which you can see our evolution over the years with that. But yeah, I started this. Uh, I, I was in the newspaper industry, still am tangentially. I write a newspaper column for the Orange County Register that's syndicated. But uh, you know, I was working full time in newspapers and uh, messing around on newspaper websites. And I decided that I really liked the idea of something that was kind of an interactive guide to something. I knew a lot about theme parks because I've worked at Disney World in college. Uh, so I just kind of did this as uh, kind of a skunk works, a little like a sandbox to play in on the side just to kind of learn some things, get up my own skills in, in coding and community development. And yada, yada, yada. Again, one thing led to another. And my side hustle ended up becoming my main job because it just blew up so big. There were so many people coming in to read this. So many people wanted to work with me on this, uh, you know, advertising revenue, commission revenue coming in on the thing that I just said, hey, you know, I'm sick and tired of waiting for the next round of layoffs at newspapers. Let's just go do this, be my own boss, go have fun for a living and help a whole lot of people find how to have fun themselves and get great good value in the process. It still must have been nerve wracking, though. I can't imagine making this your full time gig and it not still you still having a little case of the nerves. It is. I mean, to be honest, my biggest regret is I didn't switch to this full time earlier. I really should have done it about six years before I did make that switch because nerves were part of it. Just you just got this idea. Oh, I have to have the security of a full time job and benefits. But frankly, I left a lot of money on the table by leaving this as a side gig when I should have been putting the time into it because my return on investment for my time was so much greater with this project than it was working for somebody else that was, you know, struggling and laying people off every six months. We did the same thing. We took a year to get the podcast rolling and I really wish I had that year back. So man, if you're out here listening absolutely to Robert and I, get get on it. Don't delay. Um, if you believe in the concept, go with it because you will be rewarded if it's a great concept and you're putting the work into it. Well, look at just how many people you help today. It just feels good. It's a ton of fun and you're making money at the same time. It's awesome. We will link to Theme Park Insider. So happy you were here for two reasons. I get to talk to you again, my friend, but also you just issued in the start of summer for us. So thanks a ton. Let's get out there. Oh, man. It's always an adventure here at mom's house. Nothing I like better. Is Doug making a Dumbo ride also? I think Doug is the Dumbo ride, Dumbo ride of, of this. By the way, you got this one right. I got it wrong. I thought it was a carousel. I was sure that they had a carousel oh, everywhere. I, I don't think about carousels as a ride. No? No. I mean, I think like a ride ride. like a. Thanks to Robert Niles for stopping by. You hitting the theme parks this summer? Uh, you know, I haven't been to a Cedar Point, which kind of, I guess there's Six Flags, but, but Cedar Point's kind of the the one that I always went to being from Michigan. I haven't been to a Cedar point in forever. When I visit your house sometime this summer, we should, we should go to six flags. Cause I I've enjoyed it the couple of times I've gone small park. The one in Arlington, not yeah. that huge, but really, really a good time. Have you been yet? No, the kids have gone across the street. There's a gigantic water park across huge the street. Huge water. They've, hurricane, gone, they've done that. Is, but, is that called uh, hurricane Bay or something? I don't know. Yeah. They, they, they all have names that sound like Hurricane Thunder. 
<laughs> it's it's whatever apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's next. Ooh, an apocalypse. I'll pay money for that. I know, exactly. Apocalypse of water? Sign me up. Hey, let's start with Haven Lifeline OG and tackle some of life's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life Insurance Agency put what you value first. Keeping my sh- together <laughs> for one more week. It's your loved ones and your time keeping it together. And that's why they've made buying quality term life insurance actually simple. Head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life now and you'll get a free quote. I love what they're doing over there at Haven Life OG because they're committed to offering this modern way of buying life insurance. And we love fintech and love what they do at Haven Life because there's no waiting several weeks for a decision. They've got this great customer support, affordable prices. And of course, you've got the backing of a 160-year-old insurer, Mass Mutual. So you're not insuring your life by through a company that might or might not be here when you need it, which is the reason why you you buy it. Uh, let's throw out the lifeline today to our friend VJ. Say hi, VJ. Hi, Joe and OG. This is VJ, a longtime listener and a second time caller. I am a W 2 employee at my full time job. I also have a side gig where I teach some courses on the weekend, and I am a W 2 employee of that company as well. I was wondering whether it would make more sense to be a sole proprietor instead of a W 2 employee for my side gig. What framework should I use to do the comparison and make a decision? I think I'll have to pay some extra tax as a sole proprietor but I may get some deductions as well. What calculations should I do to see what is financially more beneficial? Other than money, is there anything else I should be considering? I know this show is for entertainment purpose only, so I will consult the pros as well. Who else should I ask this question to? A CPA or a financial planner? Thanks for everything. See ya. That's great. Thanks, VJ. Good to hear your voice again, my friend. Let's dive in. W2 versus... uh sole proprietorship, kind of running your own stuff. I mean, some of this is just going to boil down to whether or not the company would be interested in paying you as a sole proprietor versus W-2. But let's let's talk through some of the differences and some of the things to think about. Right off the bat, one of the major differences between being a W-2 employee and a 1099 employee, because that's how you'd be paid, you'd be paid via 1099, is you're solely responsible for all of your taxes. So in your W-2 land, you tell your employer, hey, I want you to withhold this amount of taxes for me. They do it and submit it to the IRS on your behalf and you're in compliance with all of those things. They're responsible for that. The other part that happens is when you're an employer, you know, you pay some FICA taxes, that FICA tax is split between you and the employer. Well, when you're your own employer, there's no one to split it with. So you actually pay both sides of FICA. So FICA is 7.65, I think. And so you play that uh, 15.3. There's some deductions and that sort of thing. But just right off the bat, there's, there's increased filing requirements, increased responsibility around you keeping track of it, and, and a 7.65% increase in total outflows at least. So that's the first thing. Some of the benefits of being a 1099 versus W-2, you have access to your own retirement plans. You can kind of combine retirement plans. If you don't have one through your part-time job, your your side hustle, you can create one for yourself. Now, it's still going to be limited based on your total compensation, and you'll have to work through that with a CPA, but uh, you'll have some uh, options there. And then you're talking about deductions. The other thing that I'm thinking about is some of those other expenses associated with working that side hustle become deductible. Maybe mileage if you're traveling to a client's house or, or, or office. If you have equipment and supplies that you need to purchase, you know, in the regular course of your, of your business would become deductible. So that can lower the taxable income as well. But mostly it's just around the freedom. You know, W-2 kind of kind of implies a certain amount of responsibility to your employer. Whereas 1099, by definition, you're an independent contractor. So you get 1099 wages and sometimes you work them, sometimes you don't, and you're in charge of it. So it's not, I don't think it's an easy calculation. I don't think that there's a break even because so much of it's going to be uh, flexible, but those are be kind of the first major things. And then like, who else could you involve in this discussion was a little tongue in cheek, I know, but in all seriousness, this would be a good exercise for your CPA 
to work through and say, hey, you know, I've got the option of turning this into a W-2 job. Or, I'm sorry, turning it from a W-2 job to a 1099 job. What do you think? What would be some options for me and how would this work? And they can run some quick tax calculations to give you an idea of net outcomes. Yeah, I think that's great because a lot of self-employed people, to VJ's point, OG, don't even know the math to work through. Don't don't know what the critical points are to examine to even think about this. Yeah, it's just not as simple as flipping a switch. You know, there's there's increased responsibility when you're self-employed, and uh, you know, including quarterly payments. And if you're not really good with, if you're not good with like holding on to your own money, guess what? You're not going to be a great 1099 employee because you're going to get a that surprise tax bill from the CPA at the end of the year, and he says, "Oh, you made twenty grand doing your side hustle. That's awesome." I hope you set aside 7,000 because that's how much you owe plus a thousand dollar penalty because you didn't pay last January. You know, it's like weird stuff like that, that you have to have good systems around to, to keep track of. Now it can be more beneficial for sure, but you know, you gotta know what you're getting yourself into. I think it's important too, to know that it's not just a give, it's a give and take, right? Like if I, if I don't W2 myself some money today and instead pay myself an ownership interest, OG, there's going to be some hell to pay later on, but through possibly less social security money coming in. Yeah. There's lots of flexibility um, depending on how you, you know, you're talking about an S corp versus uh, sole proprietorship and you start getting into different taxations and that's flexible too, and can be, be beneficial. But now you increase complexity there as you have to have separate tax filings and uh, different tax filing date deadlines and all these other sorts of things. So uh, none of it's right or wrong. It's just, uh, is the juice worth the squeeze basically is what we're trying to get to. Yeah, that's good. And a good, good opportunity. I think VJ, this is the type of thing where I would, uh, definitely sit down with somebody and walk them through how much money you make now, what's your social security picture look like now uh, uh, for the future, what types of things like OG was talking about, you can write off. I think that's uh, that's great stuff. OG man, you're certainly keeping it together. Keeping my sh- together. Stay in focused for the entire episode. That's great. Hey, if like VJ, you got a question for us, head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash voicemail, and we'll be sure to uh, throw out the Haven Lifeline to you as well. And for being brave, uh, our friend Gertrude, going to send VJ a little uh, SB swag, the Haven Life Greatest Money Show on Earth t shirt. One of my favorites. And by the way, they just changed the color. Brad, Brad wrote to me and said, Hey, I think it's time to change it up. Going to change it up. So, the old t-shirts now, Haven Life t-shirts, officially a collectible. They're vintage. I'm sure you'll start seeing them on eBay for tons of dollars. All right, that's going to do it for today. A few uh, housekeeping points. Uh, thanks to everybody who's written me lately about the show and questions that they've always had about the show. I think once people, OG, heard that I'm interested in talking about how we make it. And of course, uh, we just had uh, on Tuesday a couple of weeks ago, a uh, behind the scenes look at how we make the show. Uh, I love these discussions because it seemed to find that while people have thought about their point of view with the show, looking at it from the creator point of view and me also hearing what you really like about the podcast and, and what we do just fantastic conversations. Also, I'm excited on that front and no matter what business you're in, I'm so excited to get back to conferences uh, in August, going to head out to podcast movement conference where a bunch of podcast creators, if you've got a podcast and you're not going to podcast movement or PodFest is another good one, I highly recommend these conferences. And I just found out that uh, I will be on a panel this year, OG, with Gabby Dunn, Paula Pant, and the panel will be moderated by John Wardock, uh, who of course brought us to Westwood One, aka Cumulus now, as they call it. So go to conferences, you'll learn a ton and be surrounded by people who uh, are also doing the creative stuff that you're doing. If you'd like to get a guide to the shows every Monday and Wednesday for those two shows where we have a lot of different topics, head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacker and you'll get not just that, but you'll also get our series of weekly lessons currently 19 weeks long, but we're adding to that all the time making our way to 52 lessons, as well as, of course, the guides, stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacker. Last but not least, if you're looking for money help, 
and need better financial advisors in your corner, OG and his team are taking new clients. So head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash OG. Because the first step there is to get on their calendar so you can talk to them about how to make better decisions in 2021 and beyond with your money, how to get your financial plan together. It's about time. It's about time and you deserve it. Last, pre-orders are super important for any new book coming out and my new book with Emily Guy Birkin coming December 28th. And if you'd like to pre-order it and then bring it to an event, I'll be happy to sign the book for you. But I think you're going to love it. The book is called Stacked, Your Super Serious Guide to Modern Money Management. Head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacked. All right, that's going to do it for today. You got it from here, Doug. What should we have learned today? So what should we have learned today? First, take a lesson from our headline. Know a teen in your area? Help them start early getting interested in investing. It's better to make some mistakes with a few dollars than to mess up with a lot of money down the line. Second, take a lesson from Robert Niles. Theme parks are opening up. Start planning your next family trip by looking for discounts and comparing costs with benefits. Sometimes, going upscale like at Universal Hotels can pay for those additional costs with some pretty big perks. But the big lesson... When I told Joe's mom I was going to call the fair WTF, all she kept asking me was, what the f***? Really? I'm I'm trying to have a serious conversation and nobody wants to engage. WTF is that? Uh, Oh. Well, I mean, that's your dirty mind, not mine. The WTF is on, people. WTF! To learn more about our guests and for more resources, you can head to our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. To learn more about the latest and greatest in the world of theme parks, just head over to themeparkinsider.com. This show is created by Joe Saul Cihai, produced by Richie Rudder Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Online, visit us on Twitter at SBenjaminsCast or on our Facebook page. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I just jumped the shark. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remunerations. That's a big word. There's no way you take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. And before making any financial decisions, consult with a real financial advisor. So imagine that your workplace OG is Red Lobster, except your role is to be the featured ingredient in most people's dinner. You only got to show up to work one day. (laughs) It's pretty easy that way. The bad news is, is uh, you're probably not coming back home from work. This is uh, from Fox News. This is from Michael Holland. Uh, This is one lucky lobster, Michael writes. The lobster chain Red Lobster is known for having a big tank in the front of each of its locations full of lobsters. Are you a Red Lobster fan? Uh, Do I like lobster? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like lobster. I also like Cheddar Bay Biscuits. How long has it been since you've been inside of a Red Lobster, though? Oh, uh, I'll set the over-under at uh, 11 years. (laughs) I don't know. I, I thought of Red Lobster and thought of, like, going out to eat with Grandma.
right? Yes. Or and also, who else, who else takes you to Red Lobster? <laughs> and also, Duh. not very good service. I will tell you the red. If you're if you're going down I thirty, and you're coming through Texarkana, our local Red Lobster, Cheryl and I went once. I don't even remember why we went, but we went once, and the service at our Red Lobster is so damn good. And I'll tell you, I go to Red Lobster now four times, maybe five times a year, but I only go to this one. I go to the one in my hometown because I don't know. It's it's a great experience. Whoever the managers of our Red Lobster does a heck of a job. But if you've never been in a Red Lobster, he's right. There is a big tank and it's full of lobsters right where you're waiting for them to take you to your table. They're all sitting there and they're like, eat me. These, <laughs> they're like, oh, please, no. These animals are destined to end up on someone's dinner plate. But that wasn't the case for one lobster in Virginia. Turns out being a rare specimen could have its perks. Lobster in question is also referred to as one of the rarest lobsters in the world inside Nova reports. That made it even more of a surprise when it turned up at a red lobster in Manassas. Fortunately, the lobster was noticed while it was still alive and it was rescued for being served as dinner. Can, can you imagine like the right a marine biologist decides to go to Red Lobster with the family? <laughs> the marine biologist. <laughs> hey, hey, you know where we got to go? I was going to go to this five star restaurant with all of you, but I was just thinking Red Lobster sounds good. You know, because it's what I do every day. You, you remember how we said earlier in the show to keep work at work? Somebody violated the rule, but they go in there. And they're looking in the lobster tank. I just want to know how that conversation went down. Hey, uh, can I talk to a manager? Yes, sir. Is there something wrong? Yeah, I need to talk to a manager right away. And then you've got like the 27-year-old manager that comes over. And you're like, yeah, that lobster, it's endangered. Like, yeah, it is. (laughs) Sure is. We're fixing to eat it. About 20 more minutes. (laughs) I know. We're going to dump him in some hot water and crisp him up nicely. Like, no, no, no. A little butter? You got to save him. Yeah. The animal, nicknamed Freckles, due to its appearance, well, there you go, is a calico lobster. According to the news outlet, these sorts of lobsters are named for the spotted design appear on their shell and only occur in about one in every 30 million lobsters. Freckle has been donated to the Virginia Living Museum for its lobster display. But does Freckles know the difference? I was going to say, did they donate them at uh, $11.99 a pound? <laughs> If if Freckles is in one take, that's like death row. That goes to another take. It's like, oh great, this is like a longer death row. <laughs> in a statement obtained by Fox News, spokesperson for Red Lobster said, "Calico colored lobsters like Freckles are so rare. It was almost unbelievable that we received one. We're so proud of our employees for recognizing that Freckles was so special." and for reaching out so we could make arrangements for rescue. We appreciate the help of our friends at the Akron Zoo who made the connection to the Virginia Living Museum where Freckles is now in quarantine before joining the lobster. So they even have quarantine at the zoo. You know, due to COVID. Due to COVID, yeah. I'll shut it right there. <laughs> due to COVID. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.